Okay, welcome everybody. Meeting OSC Dev Team March 13th. So we'll start right away here. Uh, progress reports. Uh, I'll talk about the o Open Source Leadership Summit, the Biodigester work. Um, there is work happening on the D3D 3D printer in Ohio and maybe some other things. So uh, let's see. So quickly getting right right into the biodigester work it looks like somebody has um, produced an interest a very interesting uh, badge for ourselves I cracked up when I saw that but the biodigester is pretty much uh, we started it we, we started feeding it with digestate from the sink we're connecting the toilet to that uh, in the near future is <clears throat> so in progress uh, happening but it's quite a complex system it takes a bit of time to to make it work you can take a look at the documentation build documentation <clears throat> at the link uh, so that's that's ongoing uh, good stuff though it's uh, it feels pretty good to get it it's like venting systems drain systems overflow lots of plumbing uh, takes a bit of time to get all the plumbing right translating from the CAD model to the to the physical build and given that there were I guess a few little details in this prototype that weren't in the CAD model just had to do some reworking and it takes takes a bit of time but going well right there um, okay let's talk about the open source leadership summit real real uh, quick update on that it was a very interesting interesting uh, meeting and my comments from it are is are that I remember a few years ago it used to be the rivalry between open source and closed source <coughs> <clears throat> and the clear case right now is that open source has won. I mean, every just about everything, including now artificial intelligence, machine learning, it's all it's all going open source. In the in the conference itself, a lot of those peoples are are Google, Microsoft, and it's kind of like there's also the critique of that that the kind of the libre aspect of it has been lost, and it's just business because because it works. Uh, open source works. <clears throat> recognized as a as an effective development methodology and everyone's using it so hands down it uh, Linux has you can say in some way <clears throat> won the battle but in some way it's it's kind of lost the war in some way if we talk about <clears throat> the distribution of wealth to people but I'm gonna actually take that take that question and explore that for for a little bit so I'm gonna let me actually share my screen here. Um, so in preparing for this, I looked at I was I was along the lines thinking, all right, Linux has done it, but what's happening to to the wealth in society? And and as I was preparing, I I had a little discovery for myself, and and that's uh, I always talk about in my presentations about uh, this question here, the that 85. <clears throat> Of the world's richest people have as much wealth as 3.5 billion at the bottom of the pyramid and uh, let's take a look at that because all kind of like all the discussion out there in public seems to be that uh, wealth is still a huge huge bad issue but if you look at uh, in the next in this slide here look at the Gini Gini coefficient so that is the Google it uh, look it up on Wikipedia that's a measurement of the distribution of wealth. Zero being, um, <clears throat> let's see, Gini coefficient. What is it? Uh, zero being perfect distribution, meaning that each person has much wealth as the next person, whereas one, one person in the world has all the wealth in the world. Well, so since 1800, that, that Gini coefficient has been like about 3 or 0.4 or so. Uh, around 1988 it was at around 0.6 or 7 0.6 or 0.7 but if you look at 1988 if you this is actual data you see the Gini coefficient going down meaning towards better distribution of wealth well that is good news it's like that's the ultimate data so it's showing the coincidence of the information age and distribution of wealth actually getting better is that so even though um, in the bottom right hand graph here still that number of the 60 you know in this picture 85 of the world's richest individuals that's going down and went down to 62 and apparently in 2017 it was down to eight and the number of billionaires is increasing like mad it's uh, this is the graph here 
there's around 2,000 billionaires. But when we talk about billionaires, like in the 90s, 1990s, they used to be like 5 billion. And now the richest people are like 50 billion. So even with that, if the Gini coefficient is saying that the, that the Gini coefficient is going down, if it's going down, distribution is happening. In other words, the pie is growing for everybody, which is good. That's awesome. But at the same time, uh, open hardware doesn't exist. And that's I was kind of talking about that. How do you do that? So it's about internalizing the history of evolution. Historical evolution of economy is about internalizing different aspects into the economy. Like slavery has been abolished in 1865. Linux rose up in the 1990s. 1999, the concept of natural capitalism has try to push to the mainstream the internalization of social and environmental issues and to me like the last frontier of internalizing uh, the performance of an economy is the distribution question the distribution issue is pretty much unaccounted for in our economic accounting um, and environmentalism social issues they're starting to come into the system but that's it's interesting and but you know in one way um, I was somewhat disappointed that, yeah, like uh, mixed feelings from this conference. Like, in one side, it's it's um, you know open source is dominating, but on the other side, well, for one, open hardware is like really unknown. Still, like the we are basically in a competitive kind of warfare economy, and so to say. Uh, so I kind of had mixed feelings, but definitely, you know, it's the cases to be made for open hardware economics and the main three points that I pointed out. Um, so at the end of my presentation, I talked about like the, the milestones that we have achieved as far as showing the, the workshops happening. Like when we build the CD co home, we make like running this as an educational event what's the business model the extreme manufacturing workshops we we get paid tuition or we sell products in a in a aquaponic greenhouse and house build workshops we we are able to make like 25,000 for a five-day workshop and the goal there is to um, build a house that's one-third the cost of industry standards like have a turnkey package where a client pays the total of like set about seventy thousand dollars for a turnkey product um, compared to at least like where we are, you'd probably pay like 160,000 around for a house like that. But typically houses like the CD Co home, I mean, they'd be more like 250,000 or something. So definitely like there's a cost advantage. So we think the market is there. And then on things like the brick press, when we build a brick press and sell it, we can make 10,000 bucks in a three day workshop, 5,000 in tuition. 5,000 net in a product sale. So there's definitely a revenue model there. For the 3D printer, when we run the workshop and 12 people show up, we make 3,600 bucks. So there's all these uh, possibilities to, to generate revenue from this workshop-based production model. And that's, that's where we're going. Um, for this September, uh, I'm still planning on, we're planning on the immersion program where people would actually do this for a real job you know this is this is what you do for a living because there's there's revenue in this and of course there's a lot of work to get that to that but that's that's kind of my uh, summary of the what I talked about uh, so let's move on <clears throat> in a in a meeting here and let's go let's see so John you want to go into uh, your work now, uh, what's that? Oh, what I'm working on? Yeah, yeah, so... Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, where are you at? Like, because uh, you, you're yeah, actively um, building... Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm um, So, uh, I'm building a 12-inch uh, uh, bed uh, D3 printer. Uh, and I'm building it in proximity sensor and uh, you know, extruders, um, an older version using Mark 8, and now we're using a uh, Prusa okay. i3 yep. uh, Mark 2 uh, extruder that's been modified by our team, okay. um, you know, accommodating the bed level sensor and all the rest. So it's kind of been uh, one part of my project, just organizing documentation. 
Okay, so a couple of things here. So, um, how heavy is your file right now? Is that uploaded anywhere? Or? Yeah, it's uh, uploaded on my uh, the short development template. I have I'm keeping a version file of my work. Um, so, let's see if I can go to my log. Okay, so there, and then uh, go down to my uh, down on the development template. I have a work log. A little bit lower on the screen. Where? Development log right there. And above that, it's just called stream. You know, it's just I'm doing a uh, newest stuff first. Um, so just underneath that template. Ah. Okay. Is, yep. Ten megabytes. Okay. So here's here's one thing. Your your file's getting pretty fat. Um, yeah. so, so we've been through this actually, um, in the last iteration, but what you want to do is you use the simplified files. So there's a whole, whole deal we did about file simplification where when you use the axes and all the parts, you want to, you want to use the simple files and where, where is that? Um, do you know where, have you run into any of that? So yeah, I've, I've uh, seen throughout that there is uh, simplified versions and complex yeah. versions of the parts. That yeah. um, simple ones do not contain uh, screws, for instance. Right. So I have been in that area, and I use I just I used a uh, existing you know just D three D model. Um, and I copied in my log what we used. I just used an existing drawing or rendering of the eight inch, and I was hoping to get away with. Um, you know, just moving things around and not starting from scratch. Maybe that might be faster. Just yeah. to start from the beginning with a simple model. So that might be a good direction here. Yeah. yeah um, let's see. Well, I know what happened it was, for example, for the D3D CNC circuit mill. Yeah. That worked really well, well um, where we did the design from scratch using the simplified model. Let's see. Let's see what we can learn from that. Uh, can you paste the, let's see, I'm trying to orient myself where the simple files are. <clears throat> Do we recall where the simple files are? Um, 
there they are for example um, single y-axis right because this is where we really want to have this workbench that Ruslan is working on but let's see um, so it might be if I can grab these simpler files and then kind of yeah, I'm let's see. What's paste the link of what page yeah, that's on? Like, yeah. uh, where is that? Um, it would be okay. Let's, circuit, no. Yeah. All right. Let's see. I'm trying to go back to the source. D3D CAD. Yeah. Yeah. D3D integrations has got. Yeah, we definitely want to get this thing built, but. After that, you can get these files together, get a better Wikipedia hierarchy. We'll get there. Yeah, uh, so have you seen a D3D integration page? Let me paste yeah. that in. I've been through, been through lots of them. <laughs> right. Um, What is the, can you point me to where the master CAD is for the simplified files? Do you remember? Okay. I know we worked with this, uh, the simplified files linked through D3D integration. Um, so or is that? Let me, let me go, I have a, uh, a 3D3 printer landing page on my log that links to all this information as like a central core spot. Yeah. So let me go ahead and link you to that real quick. Yeah. All right. I'm opening up the, like from the D3D integration page, the, for example, the Y, simple Y axis. I think that D3D integration page may be where we want to start from. I just want to make sure. And besides, I mean, do you remember the, the story of, um, like you have the, the X axis now laying flat, like uh, kind of extruder right. hanging off. You want right. to put it in vertically in between, just like uh, in a D3, kind of like the same as D3D integration, where the X is vertically up and down. Because because we did yeah. that there, which you're showing, because there wasn't enough space in the frame, so that's the only way it would fit. Um, but right now we do have enough space. Yeah, I would probably suggest. Awesome. Started with the primitives and just. Use yeah, the I mean. Got it. That seems like a great idea. Yeah. I mean, you can still generate your frame. So you've got the frame generation capacity, but then use these. Right. They're actually dimensionally it's correct. It's the lagging and it's the uh, yeah, know, yeah. rendering time and all that. So and I can just use my uh, quick snap and a constrained move on an axis to quickly assemble this. Get this, get this through so I can start making cuts and then yeah. just parts and I'm you know, I'm building something now because I have everything at the house. So I just yeah. have the 3D printed parts. That's still a gap. I'm, I got my right E steps for that in, in Mark 8 extruder, but man, I think just keeps over extruding. I put it in my uh, page there. It's just uh, can't quite get it to behave. It's been uh, three weeks, and I don't think I'm, mm -hmm. you know, almost getting to be forever. Now. I'm kind of, you know, I always am the kind of guy who wants to make it work, but sometimes. Yep. You get different direction of different extruder, different hardware. So, um, you know, I got the i3, uh, the Mark II extruder is coming in soon. So once that comes in, you know, hopefully I can um, either use that on my old printer as a better extruder and you know, I know exactly what my E steps are and all the rest to put in the firmware. And, uh, or, I mean, I got, I got, extra me as an engineer and have the cash and might just buy a commercial printer and just use it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if, uh, so I heard you give me in contact with Steven or uh, someone for parts and I haven't got an email back. So, okay. So, yeah, we got to do that. Just wait on parts. I need parts. Yep. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so, so 
Right. Okay. Actually, in the in the circuit mill, I would actually suggest using those. They are dimensionally correct, and they have all the critical features, like the the ones that are important and relevant to what you're going to do, like the bolt holes, um, like on the edge, the nut catchers. So, and look at that. If you click on one of them, they are. This one's like 19k. The one I, t yeah, which means that you're gonna be just able to really do it fast. Let's see the. Um, yeah, so use that I th because X Y Z is there, and then from then on you just gotta pull up the other parts. Um, yeah yeah the thing the thing that you want to get is the the very exact frame measurement and very exact lengths of the axes because that means you're cutting your rods to the proper length and all that yeah Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm still looking for. Let me see. Where Where is the? Besides the CNC circuit mill, I was wondering if there's any other places where we have the simplified files but maybe that's it the d3d integration might be the only other place though i i thought we had another place where well check my uh, landing page uh-huh you've got you mean john log it's in the chat it's in the uh, chat the d3d landing page okay okay Firmware part libraries. <clears throat> so those are all the part libraries that are kind of able to find. Yeah, let me see the first link for the part library. Right, those are parts. Um, that's the first one. Right Y axis, deprecated bigger pictures. Just trying to collect my information there. So we can go this. Right, that's the individual parts you want for printing. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, the only thing you want to add then is just from the D3D CNC circuit mill, add those because those are the the smallest files available. I mean, I thought we did that at another place, but no, no, the, the ones at D3D integration are more like on the megabyte size. The one under CNC circuit mill, yeah, that's what you want to use. That's the That's the ultimate. Now I'm just curious where those. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it might be that. Uh, and if you find stuff when you're around, I'd ask if you could, like, you know, add it to the D3D landing page or something. Like yeah. That, so we can start to collect these uh, stuff together a bit. Okay. Um, as a team, to kind of centralize where our data is at. Um, okay. Uh, for our development process. Yep. Um. And we have, we have, but we have so many pages like that. You know, it's kind of odd. It seems to always happen. You have lots of. Here's all our information that Nick depreciates out. Yeah, I mean, the thing we want to do is is keep track of. The development template is supposed to be the the place to organize everything, build by build. 
and as you see as we just keep blasting through one build after another and and things tend to kind of collapse so yeah but d3d landing page that's good uh, if we can make that work uh, so I added that to d3d the d3d page as a note on top there cd3d language page for off effort to organize the latest build which currently is v18.02 okay Alrighty. yep okay so so i think you're set on the, the super simple axes that you can do the extruder i mean that's that's back from cedric uh, you can see that on a D3D extruder page, right? Yeah. That's that's pretty clear, right? Yeah. But the printing file for that is not. Um, yeah. Well, I have the, the CAD file, right? I have that. You, know, you gave me the page for the the CAD file, just the printing. Um, I think I may have found that. Yeah, I haven't been. Been. Yeah, I'm looking at D3D extruder. Why is that link? Um, I mean, there it is. There's FreeCAD and there's STL right there. So yeah, that's that's clear. I have clear direction there. Uh, sorry, can you paste that real quick in um in the chat box? Oh, the STL. Oh no, the the cat, yeah, the cat cat page for the extruder. Cuz I was expecting that to be on a D3D extruder page. It's not there. Or let's see what's here. Cat file download view. STL. Okay, can you uh, can you paste the link th that I sent you? Okay. We're kind of like just doing housekeeping here, but that's important. I'm gonna make sure that's all in one place. So I guess you got the CAD drawing. Looks like you found it. Okay, so it is linked from the D3D extruder. It is. Just it's right next to STL too. Next to each other. Just, you know, when you ah, right. It's you. right below there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we get there. Okay, so we got that, um, and it's modified. It's the modified version with the larger yeah. sensor holder which those yeah. those STL files are not anywhere that you have to I think export it so when you put all your assets together um, you have to generate the STL file um, where's the STL file here I thought it was it was no, just it, the motor interface STL the motor interface had one but yeah, I mean that's old stuff. That's uh, that's from MK8. I mean, I, I, I'll just recreate it from FreeCAD when I'm done. Right, right. So, yeah. So if you've got uh, your D3D Ohio page, uh, ultimately the development template. I mean, that's where everything should go. Like in line number five, you got 3D CAD which you have a seven by but no link that's you want to put the link link there CAD, yeah yeah in right. line number five of the development template so that's where you should have all your all your specific versions because the problem is on the, what you're what you're looking at 
throughout is it's got mixed versions it's like one it, it maybe has a couple of different versions on the same page and that's the thing we want to stay away from that's what kills the project it's uh it's like things are getting mixed and people don't know which is which belongs to which so yeah yep 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 so that's that's good i think um we're there uh, have you ordered the eight millimeter sensing sensor How long, how long is that going to take? Okay. Uh, where'd you find the, do you have, uh, let's see, is that in your BOM? No, I haven't updated, uh, that, that, that's the older BOM you originally linked me to. Right, right, yeah, you want to update that? Uh, would you mind sending the link? Because I, I, I couldn't really find that in the U.S. I, I got it from AliExpress. Well, that's where I, that's where I got it from, and I thought it said uh, U.S. shipper from Alley. So maybe it's going to take longer than I think. U.S. shipper? Yeah, it said USA. Maybe uh, that's just a currency, and I was being silly about that. <laughs> yeah, so you said you got it on AliExpress, right? Yeah, so maybe it's going to take a while. Yeah, it might take take a little bit. Um, All right. Yeah, well, let's just keep cranking on it, yeah. Um, I'll be probably getting back to the, I have the build with the metal frame here, which, which is 18.01. So yep. that's, that's the one I'm working on. You've got 18.02, but yeah, I'm get, I just ordered that, that big, uh, sensor. Just ordered that a couple of days ago. Yeah. But it's going to take like 12 days or something, 12 day shipping. Yeah. So. It's about like two weeks. That's what it looked like. Yeah. It's a while. Okay. Um, well that sounds... That sounds good. A lot of lot of details to take care of. So yeah, next thing is just to get you get you the part. So we got to talk to Steve. I'll just email him like right now after we finish here. Yeah, and, the parts. Uh, and so I mean, my main goal is I guess you know wrap up the CAD now that I have better direction there, and just let's get yeah. the short development template with good links in it. Yeah. And uh, with that, then we have and you know clean up my bomb because I think I'm finally to the point where I can you know get a rev out like say hey. Is where I currently am, so it's time to update stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um. I have McMaster cars uh, across the street, so I can like roll call anything from there. <laughs> amazing. Oh, literally, uh, like across I the can, street, or? Yeah. Like, you know, I drive home like five minutes away. I can go and uh, grab like whatever. Like, oh man. Uh, pay for free. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that's good. That's good. All right. Um, that sounds good. So I think you, any other questions? I think you're decent think to go there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Uh, let's see. We have anyone else? Uh, we got Lex on the call. Nobody else. So I think we can um, possibly call it a day. Lex. Uh, oh, there's Ruslan. Uh, but he's not here. Yeah. The only thing I can add is uh, my uh, 3D. My Prusa printer finally shipped yesterday. Oh man, it took a while. Oh wow, like, finally yeah, shipped. So you're gonna? In what, December, I think. Or yeah. Or All right. So it's finally shipped yesterday. It's sitting in in, uh, in Prague in the uh, customs right now. Okay. So how long it makes it out? Okay. But, um, hopefully, it makes it out. And Lex, uh, was was your plan to to build the D3D with once you get it? Yeah, I mean, well, first is just to get it. I mean, that's going to be an accomplishment. On <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that sounds good. Yeah, I mean, I, we don't have uh, much more to cover this time around. Then um, I guess we can we can call it a meeting. Then, okay, cool deal, guys. yeah, what I'll do is I'll <laughs> contact Jonathan not Jonathan, we're talking about Steven, and uh, get the parts over. Let's see, what's Ruslan saying? So he's up on to programming. He's rolling. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
so yeah we can call it make it a short meeting this time around and uh continue back uh we'll touch back in next week see where we are at that time and go from there so yeah okay all right guys well thanks a lot we'll just keep it here short meeting and uh we'll see you guys next week tuesday 2 p.m see you okay goodbye take care